past five or six years. And I'm going to talk to you about CVCRM today. So first question, who is using CVCRM? Could you raise your hand? That's a bit of exercise to know if people are still awake. Not a lot. Have you heard about it? A bit more. Good. So CVCRM is a CRM. CRM is a contact relationship management. That's about an address book. And that's more than about the details of the contact. That's about the details of the relationship between the contact. And that's about the history of your relationship with this contact. And often the question is, why do you need a special CRM, a special tool? We have already a CMS that's managing content, and a contact is a content. Well, of course, a contact is a content, and of course you can use Joomla to store information about contacts, because contacts are content. However, that's like saying that that iceberg and the water are the same. That's all H2 though, and it's the same, but the way you deal with it, the things you have to do with the contacts are quite different than the things you have to do with uh, the content in a CMS. The big difference is that the CMS end result, the visible part, is the visible part. That's the 10% at the top, that's about communicating, that's turning outside, that's talking to the world. The CRM is much more about supporting the organization, supporting the work you do, storing information. Most of the work of an organization is not visible. Most of the work of an organization is not something you will see on the website. That's something in the admin part in the back end. And CRM is focusing on that. One example, event. When you have a customer or one in your organization you want to organize an event, it usually starts by the visible part. See? I want a page to present information about the event, about the schedule, about when it is, about the location, and so on. And then some feature, I want online registration. That's the initial brief in general, that's the visible part, that's where you focus at the start, and then you start digging. You have the first level, thing that, well, do you need payment? Yeah, it'd be nice that people register can pay online directly, or someone in the team, the back office from the admin should be able to do that. Well, sending confirmation email, of course you need to send confirmation email. You need uh, invoices if it's a paid event. You have different rules about reduction, coupon, early bird, and so on. You will need an attendance list. All that is not part of the initial brief. That's not the first question. And when you start digging into that, then maybe that's just a bit more than just about content and content management. And then you have more things at the door, having the check-in saying, oh, you came, put you, registered, attended. And you have planning the catering. Are you vegetarian? What do you want? Are you eating with us this evening? You have things like the name badges. Here you have a brilliant solution, do it yourself, but sometimes you want to print it directly. You have dealing with the speakers, organizing, finding them, be sure they are there on time, and uh, so on. And maybe reimbursement, different prices, and so on. Another layer of complexity, things that are behind the scene and that are becoming harder to implement and that are probably not that specific to your specific event. And then another layer, the reporting. That's interesting to know, well, obviously, what's the revenue, what's the income you're going to get from that event. And having more information, more intelligence, saying, well, who amongst you are the first time, first comers? Who is coming regularly? So building that history, because an event you organize is not something that stands on its own, of course. Since a few days or week, the guys working on the event today are fully focused, 100% on that event. But they will have another one in one year time, and you had another one the last year. So that's important, 
and that's one of the goal of the CRM, to build that history, saying that it's not only about the events, that's about the contact, that's about uh, building the relationship, and that's about uh, the engagement ladder. That's important to know that this guy has been there for the past five years. Oh, that's one you knew. Maybe that's interesting to treat it differently, to have it humble. Oh, she's for the first time here. And all of that engagement led us, you start, you come, you try to get more engaged. Next year, you might present a lightning talk, and then, and then, and then. And all that part, all that 90% that are behind the scene as what, this, what the CRM does. We have talked about events, but you have the same needs about newsletters. You will need to send a newsletter. You will need to manage uh, memberships. You will need to manage donations. You will need to manage various lists and contacts and Excel. And the, the real truth is probably that you have a huge stack of business cases in uh, business uh, cards on paper, and that's your contact database. And it's interesting, they are all good solutions, and that's a good option for some case and some websites to use a specialized tool that does just the newsletter. But here as well, you miss the information that that guy that received the newsletter is the same guy that the one that came to the event, and that's the same person that is a member, and that's the same person that made a donation, and that's the person I had, or my colleague, had a phone call. So again, putting that all together, because each of the spices, each of the components are important, but what makes the real, really good food, the real good curry, is not the layer of curcuma, the layer of cumin, that's when you mix that all together, that the magic happens, and that you have something that is more complete. So the goal of the CRM is to have all the contacts in one and in only one place. That's a freedom that's hard to explain until you reach it. I don't know if some of you are familiar with, with getting things done. That's the same idea. If you have in one, in one place all the stuff, all, all your to-do, it frees your mind. That's the same for contacts. If you have all your contacts in one place, it frees your mind. And that's not a, oh, I need to contact Brian. Uh, I had his email somewhere. And then you start running, oh, is that the last one? Oh, he changes his phone number. And then you have to go into the MailChimp, into this, into that, to update. And your colleague forgot to do that. So that's a huge amount of time that you're spending managing the same information, managing dealing with duplicates into all these different softwares. And having that in one and in only one place is hard to get there. But once you get there, it's much easier. That's the, getting there is the cost of the quality. It takes energy, it takes time. But once you're there, you can measure the cost of that. When you're not there, you're spending a lot of time finding missing opportunities, and you don't see it because that's a hidden cost. And uh, if you're dealing with uh, a donation, it's really important that you know about the contact as much as they know about you. Because if you come to me and you have donated to the project and I don't know it, then you feel betrayed somehow. So that's important that we keep the history, we keep that information, especially in the, the civil sector. In the NGO world, you have a lot of turnaround. You didn't meet me six months ago, but you meet my colleague, and my colleague has left, and you don't know what happened. And that's important to build that relationship, to build that history. First step, you have all in one place, and you keep the history. You know that that one was sick, you know that that one likes this, and so on. And then you need to make sense out of that, because you will never send an email or do something with your 20,000 contacts. You will treat them separately, or more specifically, you will treat them by subgroup. You will not reach everyone in the Joomla community, you will reach the one that came at this event, or that bought one component, or that are installing that version. So the trick and difficulty is segmenting, putting 
the people in the right groups. One person can be part of several groups. One person can be attending in an event, donating, and that's important. You keep all that information in one place, and you can then use that to have specialized action. I want to call only these ones. I want to send an email to only these ones. And it's taking care, having a CRM, of quite a few problems you have if you do your own content. Because you start saying, oh, that's a person, that's one phone, one email, and then you realize, oh, but actually that's more than one email, that's several emails, a private, this one, that one. Oh, that's more than one phone, that, oh, that, and you start building your own CRM because that's common. The one field you think end up being a multiple field, and that's all the things that are already done by the CRM. Beside what exists, what is there, you have a need that is specific to your organization. You will have custom fields, you will have extension that you put on the top of that, and CVCRM lets you creating a new contact type thing. You are, you are a school, you're dealing with student, then you can create a new contact type student and add information about the grades or the birth date and so on. And uh, we've built, or we are starting to build, like Joomla, an ecosystem around that, an extension, an API, and hook, so that's easier. If you need a feature that isn't part of CVCRM, the core, to add that and plug that and be sure, or hopefully be sure, that it will work tomorrow with a new version. So we are talking about a CRM. CVCRM uh, is a CRM that is made for the civil society, which is something that is a fuzzy word. It means a lot of different things. It can mean someone dealing with social justice, with human rights, with women rights, with public health. All that is a big family, civil society, and the needs of the uh, civil society is the same as a company. You need to keep your address book in one place in a good shape. You need to keep that history. But the focus is different. The focus is on selling ideas, on changing the world. It's not about selling shoes. So the existing CRM, if you're convinced or if I've convinced you that it's worthwhile having a CRM, uh, tend to focus on the commercial companies tend to focus on prospects, tend to focus on sales cycle. You can use that for an NGO. It can work and you say, well, a prospect corresponds to someone that isn't yet a member. Or a sales cycle corresponds to when I'm trying to sell an ID to politicians and convince them. You can use it, but one of my customers that came from Salesforce was telling me, the problem is that every time I connected to that, it was not talking my language. It was telling me every time, I'm not made for you. And uh, CVCRM has as a focus the civil society world. And there, there are, well, beside the features, the focus, the language is made for and by the civil society. And uh, moreover, I think there are common values between NGOs and the open source world. We are all about sharing, about transparency, about exchange. And uh, civil societies would tend to buy eco product or buy things that are fair trade and so on. And I think that open source belong to that same philosophical broader movement. And uh, besides, I think that they are doing good things and I'm too lazy to do good things myself. So providing tools to people that so they can do good things is a way of hopefully changing and trying to improve myself, the world. Features. Paul is going to dig more on the presentation later on the, the, the features and CVCRM. So I'm going just to mention what's out of the box. Well, the first one, CVCRM Center, that's the address book part. Address book plus history of activities, plus information about relationship. That one works for that organization, and she's belonging to another 
and all the relationship between the persons, the families, the organization, the memberships, and so on. That's all part of the core. And you have the components that you can or can't uh, enable. The first one we mentioned, the event. So that's dealing with online registration or back office registration. That's dealing with the name badges. That's all the things that you probably will need at one point or another if you have an event and that are already there. You can decide if you want to use it or not. You can decide if the event is paid or not. The second one, probably the most commonly used one, is the mailing one. So that's sending mass emails. You can do personalization. Dear Brian, dear Robert, or you can check information about how many people read that email, or you handle automatically bounces. Again, all features that you will find on other, on other software that do just that. The benefit of having that part of the same tool is that you are able to connect what's happening there and there. And that's important to, to know that the person that received the newsletter today is the one that is going to register tomorrow to the event. The third one is uh, the CV contribute. So that's about dealing with uh, donation, being able online to give money, either directly with your uh, credit card or pay later. And as well, you can have complex rules about different levels, if you want to give goodies or not. So if you give me more than 10, I will give you a sticker. If you give me more than 50, I will give you a bag. So all the things that you see already when you are making a donation online, when you are visiting an NGO website, that things that are part of CVCRM, so it's just a matter of configuring and choosing which option you want. One that I always struggle explaining, that's CV case. Um, it started as a case for uh, patients. So I'm a doctor, you are a patient, you are a case. That's a way of keeping the history of which specialist you saw, what uh, uh, test you had, and putting that into the same place. So that's information about activities, what happened when we had a meeting, when we had a test, result, and so on. And that's about taking uh, in the same place information about relationship. Who are the other person, the social worker that uh, you saw, the psychiatrist, the specialist, and keeping that in one place. And then we have been using that for political campaign. I'm trying to convince you that you should vote for a specific issue, so I will put the information about all the actions that happened around you. We have used that for social housing, what happened around your household, around your flat. So that's a kind of project management tool to focus on what are the activities that happened, what are the persons, what are the other contacts that are part of that. Another example uh, for Frontline Defender, a human rights uh, group that's who has been, say, a journalist has been attacked, what happened, who did we contact, did we contact the European Parliament, did we contact the governor, what happened around one person. And other one CV member, well, that's dealing with memberships. You, you can have different levels of memberships. You can have different duration, different amount linked to these levels, to these um, levels of membership. And you can have directly a dashboard, an overview saying, oh, I had 10 new members last month. Oh, I'm going to lose or hopefully get renewed five more uh, this week. So that's having an overview of your membership and dealing with online registration, with invoicing and so on. CV campaign, that is things like online petition or door-to-door -door campaign surveys, and that as well about uh, um, measuring the engagement. That's something that's becoming more and more important to gauge the level of relationship you have between your organization and each of the person. So you can say that, well, each of you attended 
So obviously you're quite involved in the Joomla community, but maybe one had more questions. One other was volunteer for something. And you can make different score, different points. And again, over time, being able to know that, oh, if in six months time I have a big action around Joomla, I know that this one, that one, and that one were super involved. And I know that this one is sleeping, probably not what, yes, Paul, oh, that's you. Uh, it's probably not worthwhile <laughs> uh, contacting, or maybe that one I have over contacted, maybe leave that person alone. And uh, so that's part of the campaigning, knowing how much each of the person involved in, the, in your world are active or not, and you can decide based on that which one you need to contact first. Uh, and the, the last one is CV report. You have a huge amount of data and information that you're storing into CVCRM, especially if you're doing that right and you put all the contacts and all the activities. It's useful to be there. It's even more useful if you extract that information and make something meaningful. The engagement is one example, finding who are the leaders in your community, who are the most active persons. But that can be information at large about your membership, about the donations, about the contacts. And the CV report is a tool with 30 or 40 reports out of the box, and that's a framework to create more of these reports. One of the difficulties I'm going now into the problems you might face uh, with, a, or that I have at least personally faced uh, when you dig into a CVCRM or CVCRM uh, project. The first step is that most NGOs don't see the need for a CRM because most don't know what a CRM is. So they will start either by the public facing issue. I want a page about the event and I want the registration or I want a donation page. And then you will spend a lot of time with them designing that page and choosing the material and say, oh, I'll put wood here and I'll put two columns. And the risk is that you lose, that it's part of something bigger. And you need to say, well, actually, your super important thing here is actually over there, and that's part of the city. And if you lose that view, or if the person working with you on the project is losing that view, then you will have a list of participants today, and then you will leave it outside, and then in six months' time, well, they are probably all broken, the email doesn't work, you don't know who they were. If you have to organize something else, you don't know where to find the list. So that's important to keep in mind that even if it's the super important campaign you're working on, even if you put all your energy into that campaign, that's still going to be a small part of a broader picture, still part of a more complex environment. And uh, beside what, uh, what you see and that you might lose the global context, what's more interesting and more risky, what's under the surface. And if you dig into that, that a CRM is about contact and about interaction with this contact. Everyone in any organization is doing with contact, contact information, and the risk is that either the expectation is really high and that would be absolutely magic. I take the business card and I somehow magically it end up in the CRM. No, it doesn't happen that way. You still have to do work to put it. Or at the start of the project, the first step is usually, well, I'll take your list and your list and some kind of legacy database and we'll try to put that all together. And you tend to start with a lot of duplication and you tend to start with a big mess and garbage in, garbage out, before making sense of all of that means that you have to spend a lot of time cleaning and uh, there are tools to make it easier to dedupe, to say, well, actually, that person and that person are the same, 
but it still makes time and that's usually the first step where you realize that, well, actually my organization had a lot of duplicate information and when you put all these duplicates in one place, you're realizing that we have a lot of work. It was there already, it was hidden. Now it's there and it's visible. And that, that step that is often quite difficult in, uh, in a project. And then there, there is the risk of customization. You will want something that is slightly out of the box. Most of the things that you need out of the box are made to be custom, so custom fields, not a problem. You can add extra information if you need to. And sometimes customization is a sign that there is a broader problem. So sometimes if you are the only one doing it that way, it might be because that's not the best way of doing it. And here you reach the challenging part, saying that it's about change, it's about management of change and expectation, and you will have people that say that, well, CVCRM or the CRM of the software don't do what I want, and that's usually because the job you want me to do is not the one I want to do. And that's separating, saying the problems you have with a CRM project are not or at least not necessarily the problem of the software, that's the problem of the organization and how the work is shared within the organization. And uh, the last part you have is that even so you have put together information from participants, from event, from donation, from mailing, from membership in one and in one single place, you will still need integration the most obvious one and something we are going to talk on uh, the rest of the afternoon with the community building session and the CVCRM session, you still need integration between the back office, the admin tool, the CRM, and the front office for things like donating online. Well, obviously it means that at one point you will have a page with a donation online. It has to be integrated hopefully nicely with the real website and the CMS. And uh, that can be as well problems integration with other software, with the admin, the accounting software, with external members, with a lot of tools. And as soon as you have synchronization, it's becoming complicated. Uh, I would like to present you a bit the community and the processes you have and uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to discuss and have some questions and be inspired on how Joomla does some of the community management. So everyone will say that their project is accessible and open. I've been working in open source for a long, long time and honestly that's the most open community I've seen. Every day you can still go on the forum and have a beginner question and every day you will still have one of the founder that will answer to that question and nicely and not read the fucking manual and uh, that's, we are really trying to have beginners, to be beginners welcome and uh, well, try, hopefully you're going to be convinced as well. There is a huge focus on release. We try to have one version every six months or so. So it's a lot of progress. It's a lot of improvement. It means as well that it's hard to follow and uh, we are trying with the community to have some versions that are going to last longer than six months because that's not a reason that is the good one for everyone to be at the cutting edge or near the cutting edge all the time. Uh, the license is uh, AGPL3, so the focus is on contributing back uh, more than most of open source software. And uh, well, in general, nothing is hidden and all of the software documentation code issue is all visible and public. The, only slight case where we're not that public is issue about security because obviously we want to be able to have the solution before we make public the problem. But beside that, uh, hopefully we are fully open. 
we have twice a year CVCOM, so that's a uh, um, meeting, one in Europe, one in the US, and we have between 100 and 150 participants for today now. Um, we are organized like quite a few open source projects with a core team that is based uh, in the US, in India, and uh, in Europe. And uh, if you participate to the community and you have a question and you see a problem or you want a new feature, we, that's very likely that if it makes sense, saying that's not something specific for you, but that's something that can benefit others, that you will be patch welcome, saying, yeah, nice idea, if you code it, we put it back. And uh, that's one of the way we are getting external contributions. Another one is the make it happen. That's the cross-sourcing. So if you have a feature that you are interested by, but you can't fund on your own because that's too big, what you can do is provide some seed funding, find others that are interested by the same, and either develop it yourself and share the cost, or um, have the core team developing it for you. So that's the make it happen. And uh, now probably half of the project and new features are developed that way. And uh, now probably more than half of these features are developed by others than the core team. And the uh, cross-sourcing works. We've got the biggest is probably four thousand dollars for one feature and you've got donors that go from ten thousand to uh, fifty dollars contributing their little bit and I think it's important but I can't afford more and we do manage to have enough donors that put 50 and uh, quite a few more that put bigger and so we can collect the money needed to develop that feature and uh, the sprints, we try to, if you, every few months to have a sprint, so that's a few days or a week of work. We go together in one place and we work together. And that's a mix of people from the core, people that are quite active in the community, and uh, newcomers. On that topic, there is one sprint on the 11th of June, south of France. If one of you wants to come and work integrating with Joomla, you're more than welcome. We'll have wine. And other than that, well, the tools, if you want more information, cvcrm.org is the starting point. We are using GitHub, Jenkins, and Jira for the issue tracker. Uh, we spend a lot of time on IRC and in the forums. And uh, we are using uh, Transifex uh, to manage the, the different translations. We are now, what, 20, 20 languages that have more than 80% of all the strings uh, translated. So I was explaining that the 10% visible, that's the content management system. The 90% not visible admin is uh, the CRM, but we need uh, to build that bridge. And uh, what we've done with other CMSs, uh, the CVCRM works with uh, Joomla, Drupal, and WordPress, is that usually people from the CMS that brings the knowledge and, oh, I have that specific module community builder that would be very interesting to, be, to use and interface, in, interface better with CVCRM. And uh, so far, most of the integration work is done by the core for the hardcore integration about access rights, login password, and so on. That's done by the core. But all the nice features that are focusing about the how to improve the interface, how to have the form that for the online donation that comes from CVCRM that looks better and look more native on your public website. That's contributions from people from the CMS because obviously they know better and we work together to try to improve that. 
and uh, I will be around today and tomorrow and a few people I know here have already been working with CVCRM and Joomla. If you have ideas and suggestions of how to integrate that, I'd love to discuss that with you. So today there are two sessions um, that are going to touch CVCRM. One at four about the community builder and uh, in the same room at five, Paul is going to focus on CVCRM and is going to demo a bit more and talk about the architecture a bit more. And now it's time for the questions. Do you have questions? I have a hand. Well, in general, the community and the core team is quite open to experiment and uh, the Make It Happen started by uh, Aileen saying, why not try? And they said, yeah, sure, go ahead and patch welcome, try it. And uh, so over time, uh, that's been maybe a year now that we have started the Make It Happen, we've realized that there are a few things uh, that you need uh, to make work properly. We had most of them worked and were funded or at least funded enough to have the feature developed and uh, some failed. So one of the important part is that to have a successful one you need to have some seed funding. So in general you would need to have at least two organizations that are willing to put some money and provide input and help on the spec and help on the testing to make it happen and realize. Because if you go and you see, oh, new feature, zero dollar, um, uh, I might be interested in what's the point of putting the money in if, uh, if it fails and if it starts at zero, it means that no one is interested, so that's harder. So, so far, the make it happen that, uh, uh, that happened had probably about a third, between one third and half of the money that was already covered, and the rest was properly cross-sourced. And in general, uh, at the beginning, that's more than one organization that has the need and that decides together, okay, we need that, we need to put together the need and resource, be more clear about uh, the perimeter, the features we need, and then once that's ready and checked by the core team saying it makes sense, then we make it public and we start raising the money. Paul? When we talk about features in, in, in a Make It Happen campaign, we're talking about quite significant extensions to what is already there. Um, for instance, one of the Largest, I think, is CV accounting. It's probably one of the most important ones in terms of how deeply it affects the, the code uh, or the core code. And that some people say, listen, I've got customers who ask me for a tighter integration with the accounting systems. We get donations in, and I'd like to make, be able to you know, push all the donations directly into the right accounting code out of the system. It's a specific question, but I have a customer project. To, there's a budget to build it, but I don't think I can take enough out of the budget to do it on my own and actually do it on my own is not the normal thing. So I'm going to put up part of the uh, budget I have or I'm going to put free time of my people into it and I'm looking for others to do it because I'd like somebody in the core team to address some of the issues that recode a bit that's now quite nasty that's going to hurt me. That's the kind of thing. The difference with the Jumi community is that there is no extension, there's no JED ecosystem around Civi yet. Um, the granularity of extensions is far bigger than 
um, a simple, simple, if you pardon the expression, a relatively simple uh, plugin or even a, a forms component or uh, an Akiba backup or something. I think Akiba backup and some of this stuff comes closer to the, the size of and, and value to a, a difference functionality it brings to the core set, to the system in its totality. Um, I think the difference is also that, speaking from uh, a few years of experience, the big difference is for me is that there, there is no more welcoming community or core team than the Civi one. Um, I think in this room, and I won't name names, but I know you're out there, several people have experienced that it has not always been the strongest feature of the Joomla community to allow people to bring in code to the core. And that's probably going to go down for the understatement J. Oscar for next year. Um, that, that is being addressed, that's being fixed, but that also makes it very difficult for that process to come up naturally. Um, because of that and the issues with the JED and with licensing and paid, li paid stuff is made that a bit of a touchy area in the Joomla community much more than it should have been or could have been. Um, and I think it's interesting to see how significant amounts of functionality get done in a make it happen fashion which would probably be much bigger than any extension developer would want to tackle. And the end result is invariably that whatever comes out of a make it happen goes into the open source community by definition. Um, so there's nothing of we're getting funding to develop something which is then paid for. It's something that is developed. We're currently working together on a implementation of SEPA direct debit transaction processing for CV. For European nonprofits, that's very important. We've got half the funding already before we started the project. Um, but the end result from day one was, and all our paying customers know that, it's gonna go back into the community. So it's a different model, and I think if you're interested in that, we can probably talk a bit more about uh, that offline. And another thing we saw about the uh, make it happen is it works better for a specific feature that you can explain in a one minute pitch in an elevator. Something, uh, one of the um, make it happen that failed was things about uh, uh, improvement of the um, speed of some of the features and it was doing that work to make it faster, optimize the SQL code and so on is something that is important but that so far that hasn't been easy to fund through a make it happen because cross-sourcing saying, oh, I'll give uh, 50 euro to, uh, I, fast, I don't know why I would do that. So if it's one specific feature and that has already a few users that are willing to fund between one third and half of the feature, uh, that's what we've seen as being the recipe for success for Make It Happen. And the other thing is that, well, again, importance of CVCRM, it's easier to uh, reach the people that should be able or should be interested to found that make it happen because, well, obviously our contacts are, most of our contacts are within uh, the CVCRM install we have. So when we send a newsletter, we are able to say, well, here, these are the few features that you might be interested to found. Thank you. Here we're going to go.